We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Welcome to the Dotcast from Nine Dots. Nine Dots is the online learning community for wedding photographers. You can become a member and find out about our annual conference, the Nine Dots Gathering, at nine dots.co. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nine Dots Dotcast. Uh, today, it's me, Adam Johnson, and Andy Gaines. Hey, hey, hey. And Rahul Kona. Yo, yo. And I just thought, I, mean, I, was, I was doing some research, and I just wondered, if have you guys heard of this thing? It's called the coronavirus. It might be something topical for us to discuss. It's a pretty huge thing for the industry. I mean, there was a time, I guess there was a time a week or two ago when we were trying to be like, okay, let's not all talk about the coronavirus all the time. And then, you know, you kind of realized it was, it was going to take over the world and it has done and now it is the topic on everybody's lips so it needs to be the topic on the dot on the lips of the dot cast today yeah and uh but yeah i mean how are you feeling andy Gaines, about the, its impact on you right now at the moment my imp- well p- my personal impact right this minute um i am currently in my home office surrounded by two school children who are being forced to isolate themselves from school due to them having tickly coughs so I've currently got uh, the next 14 days, we're all unable by the new government guidelines to leave the house. So that's proving interesting for the last two days. Um, and I've also just had a wedding, my highest paying wedding this year um, has postponed indefinitely for, yeah, for the foreseeable future. So that's, yeah, that's some, that's some, some impact for me right there. Tricky times. And yeah, we'll dude, talk about well, we'll talk about both a bit more in a minute. What about you, Rahul? Yeah, just a uh, little bit stressful at the moment. Just um, got quite a few weddings between now and I guess June. I mean, who's to know how long this is going to last? But you know, or reopen and stuff. Or um, so just um, yeah, just thinking about what to do with those guys. I've got a massive wedding with like four or five events this starting this Saturday. Um, but the dad is like really high risk. And very, yeah. very, very high risk. And they were planning on having 800 people in a marquee in their back garden. So everything there is up in the air. Um, in what way? In, in that they, they don't want to cancel, but they're kind of feeling like, like they are going to, or, or just, it's just 50 50. It's not 50 50. It's certain. Well, so the wedding reception is off. The actual reception is off. And they had another thing called a Sanji, which is like a dancing kind of night. Uh, that is also cancelled um they've invested a lot of money into it so they're gonna have some sort of wedding but as i said the dad is so high risk it's not even a question of 50 50 it's a question of life or death uh okay you know yeah no honestly it is because um if he if he does um get it they, they think there'll be no way back um so we i don't know it might go from 800 people to just 30 people and me basically all, yeah all, all pretty uh pretty uh serious it's pretty stuff, intense eh? Yeah, um, yeah, and I guess I'm guessing like you know all the photographers that are listening are all going to have similar, similar stories of potential weddings being cancelled and all that kind of thing, and and like the, I guess one issue is we don't really know what's going to happen. So I suppose the main thing is like what a what can we maybe do to be kind of proactive and and do what we can to kind of keep things moving forwards or whatever. I mean, I suppose the first thing to that we've spoken about is that um, touch wood most of the the kind of cases or most of the weddings that do have to cancel they are going to be postponed right so they're not going to they're not going to go away forever so you know firstly i suppose the one light at the end of the tunnel is that we can you know hopefully get on and still shoot those weddings down the line when the situation is relaxed and the you know when things going to get back to normal i suppose yeah i mean to me the the heaviest the heaviest anxiety, I guess, at the moment is that is that so much of it is unknown. So we don't know the answer yeah, right. to a lot of these things. You know, almost like Rahul saying, you know, he, he doesn't know whether he's even going to shoot that wedding this weekend. And then there's the there's the added, like, massive perspective that I think we all need at a time like this. Of there's a family member at that wedding who it's life or death for them. Yeah. You know, uh, for us, like you're saying, the the it's it is hopefully for the most part going to be postponement. But I think that I think the thing that's causing me the most anxiety and probably most people the most anxiety is that is the general unknown. Mm-hmm. Are the weddings are the wedding it's almost like it would be way easier to cope at the moment if we just knew that everything between now and July, whatever. I'm not, I'm, I'm I'm speculating, don't take my word for that. I'll <laughs> be in the date. Dr. But, Johnson. Know, <laughs> yeah. But if if we knew that everything between now and June, now and July, whatever, was going to be cancelled, postponed. Yeah. You could just get on that, and deal that'd with be it. so much easier to deal with it from the couple's perspective, from our perspective. But we haven't got that luxury right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I know that 
the three of us are our general philosophy is we have to keep moving things forward regardless of that that anxiety around all the unknown the best that we possibly can with our clients with our businesses with ourselves with our families you know all of it and yeah that's what we're going to do on today's podcast isn't it we're going to give we're going to tell people what we're what our plans are how we're going to deal with certain things and how we're going to try our best to stay positive and keep supporting everybody else that's in it in, in part of the nine dots community and beyond mm-hmm. yeah don't, dr- don't drop an amen too early because i felt like a i felt like a good monologue but yeah don't don't drop don't drop the amen yet it wasn't amen worthy dude it wasn't <laughs> oh my word <laughs> almost almost so i guess what where were we yeah so i mean rahul let's just talk like hypothetically say that this wedding this this weekend's wedding does postpone like how are you how are you how are you planning to do how have you dealt with it to this point with that with the that bride and groom and how are you going to deal with it if that happens well yeah i mean I've tried to be in touch with them and uh, they've been a bit hard to get hold of at the moment. So I've been in touch and speaking to the planner, but everything with that family is like really up in the air. At the moment, I'm going to assume that they're going to have a really, really small ceremony, a couple of events. Um, So I'm like, no need to be self-isolating, but I'm very wary of where I'm going and stuff. I'm not doing the school run. I'm not, um, you know, I'm just keeping myself at home because I don't want to be, you know, in contact or anyone near anyone which might potentially have this virus. Uh, especially if I know that I'm going into someone else's house who has got a very uh, big health issue. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm in my head. It's as if it's going to go ahead. Um, I don't think they will postpone. Uh, they've invested way too much money and there's no government to say, or like, you know, no thing to say that this can't happen at the moment and they're going to keep it really small anyway. So yeah, yeah. I'm just in contact with them all the time. Like, well, mainly with the planner over WhatsApp. The, the bride, like, rightfully so, is is really upset. Um, <laughs> so it's like, yeah. So I don't really want to be adding stress to her. So I'm not really even talking to her. Like normally, I would never speak to the planner this much. This is the most I've ever spoken to a wedding planner, um, because I like to always have the relationship with obviously the bride and the groom. But I've taken a step back. I'm speaking to the planner, and we're just like, yeah, we're just talking, like having a little brief whatsapp meeting between the suppliers of of what's actually going to happen um but it's still an unknown and they might even just cancel it and and be like it's just it's not worth the risk um yeah you know so who knows who knows i mean what like just taking each day as it comes with that wedding um yeah yeah at the moment and, you, and you're saying so you've been in you've been in in const, relatively constant contact with that client yeah, um, with the planner. Yeah, yeah, with the planner, but not with the bride because you don't want to be another. Um, and that's kind of the reason they've got a planner, right? To keep that, to keep that stress at arm's length. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And no, especially right now. So you know, um, yeah, I'm I'm just more in touch with the planner than any any anyone else. I've I've tried. I've sent you know, obviously, like I've sent like supportive uh, WhatsApp messages to the bride and the groom. I'll be like, look, whatever you guys decide, I'm there for you. Yeah. You know, I'll make it. I'll make you amazing photos. You have amazing family portraits because I know they're really big into that. Um, all of these things will happen. You know, you're gonna get like great photos of of your day. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be the day that you expected, but you're gonna have to make the best of what it is. Um, I mean, I didn't say that bit. At the end of what <laughs> yeah. I just said, uh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't tell them that, but you know, I just kept it really positive. And yeah. she just she just sent me a heart sign back. On yeah, know, this is it. Whatever. This is it, man. So and I was just like, fine. Like you know, to me, that's the 2020 way of being like. I appreciate that hug. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 And that's so important. You know, I was up until yesterday, the day before I was very much like, I don't really know. Should I speak to the clients? Should I go to them with like a, I mean, I've, I'm sitting here now looking at my screen and I've got an, an email just came through and it's another one where the subject is a message regarding COVID-19 and it's in big red, it's in a big red box. And I'm like, that's everything saying that everything seems so terrifying. And I was like, I don't really want to add another one of those to my clients inboxes or, you know, they're going to be, it's not like they don't know about it. So I'm not going to blindside them, but I don't want to add, I don't want to add to that stress with another message regarding COVID-19. You know, I don't want to, so I just start yesterday. I thought, but I need to speak to him. I can't just, I can't just keep radio silence. I need to speak to the, at least my next few clients. And I started WhatsApping him just as if, you know, just the same way I WhatsApp you guys, you know, the same way I WhatsApp my mates. And I was, and I was saying the same kind of stuff you're saying. I wasn't trying to give him a business message. I wasn't trying to be all corporate. I was just like, guys, I'm so sorry you're having to deal with this at the same time as planning your wedding. And I, and I didn't go into cancellation policies, contracts, or anything else. I just said, look, whatever happens, we don't know what's going to happen. Whatever happens, if you decide to postpone, let's talk about that at the time. 
if it's going ahead, keep me posted. And I just kept it really human and really simple and, and really th- like thoughtful and heartfelt instead of a message regarding COVID-19 from ALJ Photography. You know, because that's just never the, from my perspective, that's just never the right approach. Yeah, for sure. And remember, like we're, we're dealing with our current clients, right? And they're our current clients because they kind of, the most of the way we work, they, they like our business and they like who we are. And they're already, we've already got the relationship with them. So you shouldn't kind of, Although, you know, obviously terms and conditions and contracts are there for a reason, and I'm not saying they don't count, but having them on side in in a kind of a human level is super important for not only to kind of make them feel comfortable, but also to, to progress when things do get, you know, when things do start to go wrong and you have to make changes yeah. and stuff, you know? I, I like, think, like, before this big C word, coronavirus or COVID-19, the biggest C word in, in like the, uh, for us is weddings. For me, it was contract, mate. Oh, wow. Like the minute, the minute, yeah, didn't, know where you were, because... didn't know where you were going then. I thought oh, we were going right. to hit the explicit button on the podcast then. No, no, mate, no, good no, work. It's not about that. Um, because the, the minute you start talking contract, in my opinion, your relationship with the bride and groom is over. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've definitely... always said to each other as well. And so I'd never talk about it. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, cr- crack on. Yeah. But uh, I was just going to say that... that We've always said, and, and and it does come up every so often, doesn't it? You know, I've got this, you know, somebody, will, a, a question will just pop up in the Facebook group or whatever, and it'll be like, oh, I've got this potential issue. The contract says this. And we've always said our always party line, I guess, almost has always been a contract is only ever a la- an absolute last resort when the shit hits the fan between the two of you. Yeah. And I don't, and at this point, you know, there's, everybody's talk really in the, in, at the moment in photography land is, how, how do I enforce my cancellation policies? Can I enforce my cancellation policies? Can I get these fees? Can I get them to pay then? And this, that, and the other. It, when in reality, I don't think the couples are thinking like that. The couples are mostly going to, like you say, 90 odd percent of the time are going to be t- thinking in terms of postponement rather than cancellation. They're not going to be checking their contracts every five seconds to check what their cancellation policies are and all the rest of it. They're just going to want to know that we're going to be there for them and we're going ca- to and we're going to work with them as much as we possibly can mm-hmm. as as things change and move. So. It's not like stage one, move to contract. It's, that's, that's always going to be the last resort if you can't resolve things in other, in other more human ways with your clients, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Agreed. Tony. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, and we're, not, we're, and we're definitely not contract law experts. We're not going to try and be contract law experts. There's a lot of that floating around the industry at the minute, contracts and jar, in law, like legal jargon and all the rest of it. We're not going to, we're not, we, we can't ha- profess to have any <laughs> expertise in that area whatsoever. So we're not going to try, but I, I guess I guess the my... advice that I'm giving is though, um, speak to your clients. Don't try and don't think that saying nothing is better than saying something. My, and, spe- the, uh, spe- and also, but speak to your clients as like human beings and not yeah. not people you have a contract with, even though you've <laughs> exactly. got a contract with them. Because... They don't need a they don't need a corporate message. Yeah, yeah, they don't no, need we, a corporate message. And I, I as soon as I as soon as I'd spoken to my next few wedding um, couples, I felt way better to, because I'd said something. Their, re- their reaction was unexpected. You know, they were concerned how I was feeling as much as anything else. They were so happy that I'd heard from them. Well, the first one that I spoke to said her heart sank when my name popped up because she thought I was going to say that I wasn't coming. This wedding is not till May, by the way. And like, I mean, realistically, we it seems like May's, you know, who knows. But I, it wasn't me saying I wasn't coming. It was me saying, look, I'm here. I'm thinking of you. Can't be easy. If the wedding happens, I'm there. If you have to postpone it, let's work together on the on the on the postpone on the date you're going to postpone to, and make sure that I can be there when that happens. Uh, and if there's anything else I can do for you, that then you know, let me know. It wasn't it wasn't in any way corporate. It, again, I, I did it by WhatsApp. It wasn't an email. It wasn't a, it wasn't a. You know, that's the thing. The thing that I've realized most since coronavirus is how many people have got my email address because I've had COVID nineteen messages from about a thousand companies, <laughs> and it's companies where you think. I didn't even need to know what your coronavirus policy is. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. Now I do. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. No, no, but no, yeah, that, no, so that would be, that'd be tip one, just to try and keep this. Uh... And the, yeah. And the other, the other thing, I mean, I kind of mentioned it before, but, but more or less, barring any, you know, more, more or less, the same number of people who are going to get married this year and next year and the year after are all still going to get married. They're just not going to, it's just not going to be happening potentially in the next few months or some of it will, won't be happening in the next few months. So yeah. like th- really, I guess, you know, it, it comes th- like, I could, like I said before, it, it is like an immediate cash flow issue as opposed yeah. to anything else. You know, if you're still in business in a year's time, people that were hoping to get married this year are potentially going to be getting married then or the year after. So, you know, like for me, that's quite, that's kind of, a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good thought to, to, to keep in mind, you know? Yeah, yeah, and and also, you know, realistically, 
people can't plan their weddings at the moment either. So it, it is going to slow down, potentially going to slow down new bookings. Yeah. People that, you know, people that maybe haven't started to look at venues yet, they're not going to be able to go out and look at venues realistically mm-hmm. or they're not going to want to. So it is going to slow down new bookings. And I know personally the way that I the way that I run my own business cash flow is I have a predicted amount in every month for number of new bookings that I'm going to get. So number of new deposits. I'm going to have to adjust that. Yeah. For reality based on the fact that, you know, realistically in that while it's like this, while it's like it is now or worse, I'm not going to get any new um, or it's going to be less than I was expecting. Um, so there's that as well. So, I mean, and, and that immediate cash flow, though, you know, not to play it down, that is a hu- it's going to be a huge, huge, huge problem to a lot of businesses. Yeah, for sure, dude, for sure. That don't have a safety net or don't have, a, like, contingency or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. So I guess, yeah, I mean, how... How how would you how would we suggest people deal with that? I mean, there's obvious there's obvious things. I know somebody brought up a good tip in the in the group the other day about you know getting out a loan. Again, there's there's a lot of unknowns in that we don't really know what's going to be offered from the government to help small businesses like ours yet. Um, mm-hmm. I would I would hope and expect that there's going to be something at some point. But I some, wouldn't hold my breath. I, I wouldn't hold <laughs> yeah. your breath on that one, mate. I'm not going to hold my breath, but I'm I, I'm I like to be a I like to be a yeah yeah no, <laughs> that's true yeah you, the, the, yeah you don't know what that is that's true. I, yeah. My thought process on that would have been I would like to hope and think that nothing is going to happen, so I need to fend this for myself. No, you, can't, you can't hope that nothing's going to happen. No, I said like yeah, yeah. the expect. best case is yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah expect yeah. yeah you know. Um, uh, but I I would I will remain optimistic on that front, and also that there are some murmurings coming out of banks that they are going to introduce. Uh, defer deferments on mortgage payments and things like that. So, um, I think there will be things that will help people with those short-term cash flow issues that I think our industry is going to be really susceptible to. Yeah, I think. You see, the, another thing that you know, I've, I've been think, I've been thinking about is obviously when you, let's say, many of the many of the weddings that are coming up are going to get postponed. Um, then that, in a way, is not is is not the end of the world because we'll just shoot the wedding whenever it happens, and we'll still get paid for this, this paid the same for the services. So, you know, to speak to those couples, you know, in the first instance, and just say to them, look, I'm gonna whenever you rearrange your wedding to, you know, as long as I'm free, I'll do it. Work with me so we can hopefully get get the dates to match up. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy to lock the prices and everything in, but. Could you you know you could still ask for some or all of the balance due when it would have been due anyway. You know, but, potentially, yeah. potentially they'd have budgeted for that already. So it's yeah. possible that they're going to be able to pay you that money, even if the wedding doesn't happen next month, it happens in nine months or 12 months. But then again, you've got that, you know, you're going to get that cash in the bank to help with any immediate cash flow. Yeah. And again, I mean, this goes back, everybody's going back to the the original C word that Rahul talks about contracts and saying, oh, with contract this and terms and conditions this. And, um, but, you know, the realistically, the best thing you can do is, make sure you keep hold of that booking yeah and, ma- and make sure that i mean again it just comes down to a human conversation you know see what they're happy with see what you're happy with it might be that they're able to pay the balance now in which case cash flow sorted potentially it might be that they're happy to pay maybe half of that balance now and and then def- delay the next until when the wedding takes place but it's the communication that's going to be the key to it don't leave it until you know the it hit, everything hits the fan just be in contact. It doesn't have to be every single couple from the whole of the year because that could be overwhelming for you and everybody else. But at least for your next few weddings that, that are potentially within the affected period, which again, we don't know how long that period is going to be. So I've only gone to them. I haven't got a wedding until May anyway, but I've gone and spoken to all my couples who have got weddings in May. And I'm, and then if it moves, if it carries on, I'll speak to my June couples. You know, I'll, I'll take it in chunks like that. I think, I think like, um, you know, you've you got to think of, if you're in that position, you know, what, how would you want your suppliers or vendors to feel or, or do for you, you know, which is, I guess, what us three always do in our business. Like, how, how would you want to be treated? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. do you want do you want your supplier or vendor to, or photographer to ring up and go, according to my contract, you can't postpone. Now <laughs> this is this and this. Like, or would you rather than be on your side and be your friend? And maybe, just maybe, you know what? Out of all the vendors, you will come out looking at the best. Maybe you can't shoot their wedding because you've already got a booking for 2021 or whenever they postpone it to, right? But at least they'll know, be like, okay, you know what? They were really nice to me. So no matter what, I mean, I would have had loved to have had them shoot my wedding. I can't, but they might maybe refer you later on down the line, you know? Um, it, it doesn't stop with just not being able to shoot their wedding and postpone. Like you have to just keep thinking about moving forward. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think, also, I think it's, yeah, go, yeah, on, go, go on, no, you go. Well, I was saying just like, you know, with that in mind, it's like, if if weddings do get cancelled and we do end up 
with no weddings to shoot like don't don't you know just try and use that time to plan ahead you know think you know google search engine isn't going to stop during because of this so <laughs> that's going to continue going you know like all these there's so much stuff we can be doing to plan for next year and plan plan for the future so yeah, it's a huge opportunity. Just just to finish the, and that's I'll, we'll talk about that now. But I just wanted to finish talking about the whole, you know, if people postpone, if people cancel contracts, etc. I would say the best, all you can do is make some basic plans. You know, there's going to be four or five eventualities, really. You know, in in reality of what's going to happen, someone's going to come to you and want you to come to their wedding and shoot it, potentially during the the lockdown slash non lockdown that we're in at the moment. Mm-hmm. How are you going to deal with that? Somebody's going to come to you and say it's postponed to this date and they've already got a date. How are you going to deal with that? Somebody's going to come to you and say, we're going to have to postpone it. When are you free? And then you're going to have to deal with that. So sometimes, and this is how my mind works, sometimes just having a little bit of a plan, it doesn't have to be like a, you know, a, a bulletproof military action plan for it, how you going to deal with every event, but, but just starting to think about these things so that you, you, when that couple comes to you, you're able to have that conversation. And, do it in a way that is be- you feel is best for you and your business and your clients rather than going along with the, all the quite strong discussions that are happening around the industry now in and around contract law and all the rest of it because that's always that's just worst case scenario stuff that would, that would be my advice and what are we going to do to help with that as nine dots we're going to create some uh, we talked about creating some email templates for people to use mhm uh, that we're going to people to uh, kind of to help people reply to those kinds of things, uh, and maybe some kind of kind of tip, guide of tips of these things that we're talking about that we're going to put out as well. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Yeah, and then the next thing obviously is in this time when now, realistically now we haven't the, the main bulk of our work, which is taking <laughs> taking pictures of weddings and editing the pictures we've taken at weddings, potentially isn't going to exist. What are we going to do? I'm going to become a full-time babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> Once we're in lockdown, that's it. Um, my wife will still be working full-time from home, I guess, and I'm just going to be looking after kids. I think there's loads of things that you, you could do, um, firstly, to help your business move forward, and then maybe yourself to, like, personally move forward in life, you know? I don't think, like, say, when this country happens to go into lockdown or something, and you've got, like, two, three weeks at home, there's so many opportunities to, like, learn, create, think about other things, so true man so the 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 your business just because the work the immediate work has stopped doesn't mean your business has to grind to a halt like andy was saying before i interjected and went back a step you know seo google the search engine google isn't just going to turn off overnight and say right we'll switch back on when this is all over that's going to carry on people are still going to be looking for wedding photographers even if they're not able to really forge ahead with their wedding planners people are still going to be looking yeah if you if you uh, uh, you know if you're a couple and you you were planning to get married in 2021 or beyond yeah like i, I wouldn't you know if, if i if i was them i would still be planning to get married in 2021 knowing that potentially this kind of crisis is going to last no not much more than this year you know yeah yeah so i had, I had a book so, the other day for november this year yeah, good work. Two, two days ago in the midst of the crisis you know so it's yeah, not yeah. people aren't stopping planning people people are going to carry on like you say carry on sorry dude Mm. no no but that's it so i mean like you know people are going to still be there are still going to be people considering looking for stuff so you you know you can't just don't throw your feet up and chill out (laughs) no one's gonna be chilling out i think i'm more worried about the fact that people will just wallow you know and worry and in reality the way i deal with all that kind of stuff because i'm going to be doing that as well you know i'm not sitting there going everything's gonna be fine you know we'll come out the other side of it because that's just a trivia that's trivializing something that's that is bigger Mm -hmm. than too big to be trivialized so I'm going to be just working. I'm going to be working. And, and like Rahul says, I'm going to be trying to learn new stuff. Yesterday, for some reason, I decided to download a thing called Spark AR, where, where you can create your own effects for Instagram stories. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. I've seen that. And I thought, you know, I'll try and create. An, a, a, I don't, and then I gave up after about an hour because it was quite complicated. But, you know, I might try to learn that. You know, there's the jokey meme that's gone around saying that when, when Shakespeare was quarantined during the plague, he wrote King Lear. You know, it's, but it's funny in one way, but... Um, you know, inspiring as well. Inspiring. It's stuff you can do. You know, I'm not saying everyone has to go and write a, a novel that's going to stand the test of the centuries, but um, it's a play, mate. A play. No, no, you know. On. You know what? You've just ruined the point I was making. No, <laughs> it's true. No, but uh, but there's so much that I want to I want to learn in my business and do in my business, and, and it, it could be you start with the basics, right? Work through your website, refresh the images throughout your website, and look at the look at the copy and text and tone that's in your website. Make sure it's on brand. Make sure it's up to date for this day and age. Um, your brochures, same thing. The, the email templates or the text that you know, all of this kind of stuff doesn't need to stand still just because we're not able to actually get out there and shoot weddings. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you have to plan for like, like you just said before, like the weddings from 2021 and beyond, you know, um, and fix up the small little things that have annoyed you in your business or, um, and even get, why not? Like, even though accounts aren't due, I mean, depending on your year ends and stuff, but you know, just get them all up to date. There's so many things you could be doing like admin wise. Yeah. And all everything from the, from top to bottom in your business packaging, you know, all of it. Um, and we're going to, we're going to keep creating content to try and, and obviously there's a load of content already there within nine dots that probably people might not have even started to work through yet that you can, they can go to. We'll, we'll keep putting stuff out that helps people, helps give people ideas and, and stuff to do in the time when you are going to be stuck at home. And it's not going to be easy. You know, you, the, the three of us are, you know, realistically potentially going to be stuck at home. Every day is going to become Saturday and Sunday. We're going to have our kids here wanting us to play games and do stuff and, we can't go out, so there's the pressure to keep finding stuff to do in the house. It's not going to be an easy time where we're just going to be able to sit at our desk for 12 hours a day. Um, I know you, not all of us want to do that. I love doing that. <laughs> Andy doesn't love doing that. <laughs> um, but, you know, the fact, that, the point I'm making really is that the last thing that we should do at a time when our businesses are under threat, and that's not, that's not, that's not exaggerating really, the last thing we should do is just let them sit and, you know, and not try and move them forward when we've got this. What? Yeah, like just let them sit and accept that, you know. Yeah. We've got all this stuff that we can be doing and or learning, like Rahul says. You know, I'm I'm I mentioned in an early podcast that we did that one of my goals for twenty twenty was to learn how to program again, to code, to build software. I'm gonna crack on with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna really get on with that and 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 you know, while I while I've got the opportunity or opportunity slash, you know, I have to sit in my, in my house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do those kinds of things. So uh, yeah, and you can really maybe forge ahead with your beekeeping. Who knows? Dude, I don't know. I don't know if the bees might be in lockdown as well. I need to check that out. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how that works. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do some research. I'm still yeah. a newbie. I'm still a newbie in that world. <laughs> but you got to stay positive. You got to stay positive, and you got to stay f focused on what you can do in your business, not what not on what you can't do or you're being stopped from doing. I think. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and obviously, like you, like you said, you know, hopefully we're going to be dropping some like resources and, and ideas and some more kind of live things for people over the next few days and weeks to kind of try and keep people inspired and up to date and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. The very at the very least, like how to how to make a little bit of a plan around the eventualities that are potentially going to happen in the next in the coming weeks, and some templates and some suggested wordings and things like that of how, of how you can deal with them. Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah, we'll do. We're going to be doing what we can to help. Some suggested good practices and ideas. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what we're saying, we're saying, stay positive. Yeah. Keep talking to each other. Yeah. This industry can survive if we if we talk to each other and help each other through this. And and yeah, and we're going to be doing our bit to help with that as well. Yeah. So amen. Stay safe, people. And wash your hands. One, two, three, listen. You can listen to previous episodes of the Dotcast anywhere people normally listen to podcasts. And you can find out more about Nine Dots membership and the Nine Dots gathering at nine-dots.co.